So in the medium run, as I said, we are going to be using the price setting and the weight setting relations. So let me write those down. Uh, and of course, we are going to uh, include technology in the price setting relation and the weight setting relation. That's how we combine technology with media. So let's start with the price setting relation. What we had was price is equal to the markup times wage. What we are going to do is divide this by technology, okay? Why are we dividing this? Uh, the implications of this is that if there is technological progress, if A goes up, firms can produce at a cheaper cost therefore charge a lower price. Okay, so that should be obvious to everyone that if A goes up, which is in the denominator, and nothing else changes, uh, W doesn't change, M doesn't change, what's going to happen is P is going to go down. And the opposite is also true. If there is a loss of technology for whatever reason, and A decreases, then production becomes more expensive, and as a result, price will go up. So this is how we introduce technology into the price setting relation. And at the weight setting relation, what we had was wage equals to expected price and a function of unemployment and all other factors. Now what we are going to do uh, to make this, uh, to include technology here is add A, okay? And just like PE is, <coughs> Excuse me. Just like BE is expected price, AE is going to be expected technology. And so here's the thing. Uh, what happens if expected technology goes up? Forget about the equation right now. Just think of it theoretically. You're a worker. You're bargaining your wage uh, for the next two or three years. And what you expect is technology to go up. What you will know is that A, uh, the firm that you're working for, will experience a fall in cost. As a result, they will have more money to pay you. You're not worrying about the consumers. You're not worrying about the firm. No one. You're just worried about yourself. And you know that in the coming years, cost of production will fall, and so your firm will have more money to pay you. So you want your wage to go up. That's number one. Number two, when technology goes up, remember we're concerned with AM, which is the effective worker. When A goes up, you become more effective. You're going to be using better technology, so the output that you give to your firm, to your company, is going to be better, it's going to be more. So once again, you're going to demand a higher wage. And so that's why you, if you take a look at the equation, when expected technology, the technology is expected to go up, wage will go up. And the same thing is true for your company. Suppose you hire a lot of workers and you're uh, bargaining with them for the wage of coming years. And so if you expect technology to improve, so you'll say that, all right, so my cost of production will fall and I can pay these people a little bit more. At the same time, because of better technology, I expect these workers to give me better and more output. So I'll pay them more, I can afford to pay them more. And so wage goes up, it works both ways. 
from the workers and the firms. So these are the modified price setting relation and weight setting relation where we've just effectively added a technology in each of them. And if we, of course, um, play around with them, what we get is W by P is A divided by one plus N. Uh, and we get W by P is equal to A function of U and Z. I mean, of course, we can put our expectation here. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, so once again, uh, I've talked about the interpretation of this equation and this equation. Uh, why don't you guys just uh, pause this video and take a few minutes to interpret this equation and this equation. Remember that on the left side of each equation, we have WP, which is real wage or inflation adjusted wage. And so just take a few minutes to figure out if you're absolutely certain you understand what this equation is and what this equation is. Okay. What I'm going to do is draw the diagrams. So we have unemployment here and we have real wage here. Get the uh, price setting relation here. We get the weight setting relation here. So this is the equilibrium. Uh, what do you call it? The equilibrium real wage. And this is the equilibrium unemployment. Or you may call this the natural rate of unemployment. This. Okay. Now same thing, we are going to assume that there is technological progress, okay? So effectively, what is happening is that A is going up. So let's take them one at a time. Let's take a uh, look at the price setting relation first, which is this. If A goes up, what's going to happen is that this equation is going to go up. this goes up, wage has gone up, but, and what you see has happened, okay, let me start with the price setting relation, that's going to be more intuitive, we'll come to the weight setting relations. So, price setting relation, if A goes up, what we know is that the weight setting relation, A goes up, weight setting relation will shift to the right. rightward shift but what we see is that we have a new unemployment so unemployment has increased so that looks like a bad thing but what we also need to keep in mind is that the price setting relation is going to change as well and what that means price setting relation changes. And so this was the initial equilibrium. Then we move to this equilibrium. Now we come to this equilibrium. And you see over here that unemployment is back to the original level. But what we have now is a new real wage. So let me write down what we've seen. A rise in state of technology leads to no change in unemployment in the medium run. Real wage, 
this up. Well, that's a good thing, right? First of all, no one has lost their job, or at least initially it looked like jobs were disappearing, but then they came back again. Uh, so sort of like people are afraid that, you know, the fourth industrial revolution is going to lead to job losses and there's going to be massive unemployment. And true, that will happen in the short run. But over time, who's going to maintain these robots and technology? I mean, we're, we don't have artificial intelligence. And even if we did, someone has to maintain them. Someone has to program them. Someone has to code and check and you know keep an eye on the algorithms. So these are jobs that do not exist today. But once we have this new technology, there is going to be entirely new fields of employment created. So in the short run, unemployment will increase. That looks like a very bad thing. In the long run, there will be new jobs created, which will you know, create more employment, reduce unemployment. But the good thing is that wage is also going to rise. So the wage that you and I enjoy is going to be higher. So that's the thing with uh, technology. In the short run, it's bad. In the long run, at least theoretically, it looks like it's a good thing. Okay. Uh, so that is really it for chapter 13. Now here's what I'm going to tell you guys, okay? Uh, after this video, read chapter 13 and especially focus on the empirical evidences. Now empirical evidences are what we've talked about a lot of things here and what the model tells us but we haven't talked about any real world examples of what has happened and what we can expect to happen. Uh, in the book, they talk about uh, real world instances of when there has been technological progress and what has been the effect on the economy. Uh, so do go through them. That's going to help you understand the thing much better. Okay. So next in the next video, obviously I'll be solving a problem, but before you take a look at that, uh, I will encourage you all to first read the book. Uh, it's, it's not much, it's just like 20 pages, uh, chapter 13. And it's probably the most interesting chapter in the book. Uh, so give it a go.